Proteomics has been a key area of focus for researchers. The utility of the detailed and complex information contained at the protein level is a key to understanding biology. Virtually every function within a living organism occurs by the action of a protein or a group of proteins interacting with each other and working together. Despite the impact that proteins have on biology and physiology, the human proteome is relatively unexplored compared to the human genome. While the understanding of biology and disease mechanisms has advanced significantly over the past decade through large-scale data collection technologies, we believe these advances have mainly been in genomics. The widespread adoption of molecular profiling technologies, including next-generation sequencing, has led to the identification of over 650 million genetic variations across all genomes that have been sequenced. Although this information has significantly improved our understanding of biology, the functional context at the protein level has not been established for the vast majority of this genomics information. In other words, researchers have not been able to connect phenotypic information with the relevant genotypic information. Without generating equally large bodies of proteomics data to understand the relationship between protein structure and function in both healthy and disease states, researchers will only be able to tap into a small fraction of the potential biological understanding that this vast genetic data set can yield. The human proteome is dynamic and far more complex and diverse in structure, composition, and number of variants than the genome, transcriptome, or epigenome. Starting from the genome, there are multiple biological steps that take place to arrive at the proteome, each step driving increasing complexity and diversity. The human genome has approximately 20,000 genes, and is estimated to give rise to a million or more protein variants. That is because distinct ribonucleic acid molecules can be produced from a single gene during the process of transcription. This results in a myriad of structurally distinct proteins during the process of translation. Following translation, proteins can be further chemically modified in unique ways, producing a large number of protein variants from a single gene. As a result of these multiple processes, many levels of protein diversity exist from amino acid sequence and structural variations to post-translational modifications to protein-protein interactions. In addition, all these forms of diversity can differ between states of health and disease. We believe the fundamental challenge with existing proteomics technologies is their inability to measure the breadth and depth of the proteome's complexity rapidly and at scale. Unlike DNA, protein structures, chemistries, and concentrations in any given sample are widely variable. Proteins also lack a direct amplification mechanism, which creates technological challenges for identifying proteins at low concentration. This is different than DNA, which has an inherent and direct amplification mechanism for its replication, a mechanism that researchers have exploited with technologies such as the polymerase chain reaction for the detection of DNA at low concentrations. Given the diversity of protein structures, coupled with the lack of a common amplification mechanism, researchers often use analyte-specific reagents, or ASRs, to measure proteins. ASRs are ligands, such as antibodies, that have been designed to bind to specific areas of proteins and therefore involve a targeted or biased approach. This biased approach is limited in that ASRs do not have the capability to interrogate the entirety of the protein structure that they bind to and may not detect the presence of important protein variants. The average length of a human protein is approximately 470 amino acids, whereas the average binding site of an ASR is an epitope with a length of five to eight amino acids. ASRs cannot recognize differences between proteins outside of this small epitope binding site and therefore may not differentiate among protein variants. While a large number of ASRs can be designed to detect a large number of different proteins, this approach is limited in its ability to measure protein variation. We believe that ASRs and other biased approaches are not optimal for discovery given the inherent protein complexity that exists. Blood plasma, which includes signals from most tissues and is a rich source for protein biomarkers for disease detection, has a large dynamic range, which represents a huge challenge for any detection methodology. Current unbiased approaches don't scale well due to the vastly different concentrations of different proteins in samples. The concentration of proteins in plasma, for example, can span 10 orders of magnitude from the most abundant proteins, including albumin, to some of the least abundant proteins that include some cytokines. The top 22 most abundant proteins account for approximately 99% of the total protein mass in plasma, yet the many thousands of less abundant proteins found in the other 1% have significant impact on biology. 
It is critical to be able to broadly and deeply detect proteins across the proteome, including those proteins that appear in low concentrations in plasma. The proteomics field has evolved a number of relatively standard workflows for approaches to deep plasma profiling. These include abundant protein immunodepletion, typically removing the top 12, 14 or so proteins, as well as peptide fractionation. These approaches attempt to remove protein signals that extend the necessary detection range for signals, as well as to reduce the complexity of the number of signals that need to be measured in any one MS scan. Unfortunately, as these methods have developed or become ever better at deep interrogation of single or few samples, the very complexity of the methods necessary to achieve these goals constrains their application in the large scale studies that are more typical today. By constraining the numbers of samples that can be evaluated in a study, power is lost and reproducibility between studies owing to small sample numbers is compromised. In other words, the field has optimized on a set of parameters, depth and breadth within a sample at the expense of another critical parameter, study scale. This slide highlights the required mass spec time and the resulting depth of coverage for several different current methods of unbiased plasma profiling. The depth of coverage achieved by measuring neat plasma without depletion or fractionation is limited and does not provide the whole picture. More complex workflows like depletion and peptide fractionation go deeper but trade off throughput, scalability, coverage, and precision. Effectively, the field has had to choose between studying many subjects with few proteins, typically with bias targeted methods, or studying few subjects with many proteins with the methods previously described. This creates an unmet need for a technology, platform, and workflow that can deliver both needs at once. All of these criteria, being unbiased, deep, rapid, and large scale, need to come together at one time to capture the true value of proteomics profiling. The SEER proteograph product suite described in subsequent talks enables any lab to take on large scale proteomics, much the same as next generation sequencing product did for genomics. The proteograph brings together unique technological capabilities in an integrated, easy to implement and reproducible workflow. It includes reagents and consumables, automated assay instrumentation, as well as mass spec data analysis and quality control software. Taken together, the proteograph lowers the technology adoption barriers by configuring solutions that fit around nearly all mass spec platforms. In summary, proteomics is valuable as an indicator of biology, but it is very challenging to collect proteomics data at scale. Unbiased approaches are required to capture the diversity of the knowns and unknowns that exist in protein variants. Deep and unbiased methods have been developed to deal with small numbers of samples, but they do not scale to the ever increasing size of today's discovery studies. The unmet need is a technology that combines depth, breadth, and scale without compromise.